Genesis was chapter 3, you can follow it on the screen uh, in case you don't have it ready, but you can follow it on the screen. The Bible says, and it came to pass. It came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go. For you know my service which I have done for you. And Laban said unto him, please stay. Please stay. If I found a favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, name me your wages and I will give it. Verse 29, the Bible says, and Jacob said unto him, you know that I have served you and how your livestock has been with me. Verse 30, for what you have been, for what you had before I came was little. And it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now, when shall I also provide for my house? Verse 31. So he said, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. So Laban asked Jacob, what is it that I wa you want me to give you? And Jacob tells him, please understand that this is a sc scenario that I'm reading right now. Is Jacob has been in the house of Laban for 14 years. He has served uh, for seven years and he got Le Rachel, uh, 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 sorry, Leah, and then seven more years and he got Rachel. And then he's ready now to move on and to go on with his life so that he can begin to be productive and to make uh, uh, wealth and create wealth for himself because he had served Laban for 14 years and yet he had nothing to show for it. When he's about to leave, Laban tells him, I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you, you, are, you have been so blessed that I have been blessed because of you. Then he says, okay, uh, 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 please stay. And then he says, okay, what shall, uh, and then Laban asked him, what is it that I shall give you? And that is where we are, verse 31. So he said, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. Everybody say, you shall not give me anything. Come on, everybody say, you shall not give me anything. I wanted to clear your throat and I wanted to say this uh, clearly. I am not a beggar. You, I didn't hear you say it. Say, I am not a beggar. Come on, say it one more time. I am not a beggar. Say, I refuse to beg. Say it with some conviction. Say it with some passion. Say, I don't care where you are right now, but say, I am not a beggar. Come on, somebody say, I am not a beggar. And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. If you do this for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Now watch this. Let me pass through all the flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats and these shall be my wages. He says, allow me to go through, the, uh, uh, through your flock and I wanted to do something. I wanted to remove the spotted and I wanted to remove the, the speckled and these shall be my wages. But I wanted to watch this, verse 33. So my righteousness will answer for me in the time to come when the subject of my wages come before you, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and the brown among the lambs will be considered stolen it is, uh, if it is with me. And Laban said, now he says, remove all the spotted, all the speckled, remove everything that has any spot or need from the flock, 
allow me only to have that which is uh, white only one color all right one color then i wanted to do something let me just read this uh, uh, quickly say it say this and then uh, I, I preach and i want you to take the spotted and the speckled and give them to your children your sons and let them take a three-day journey away from me let me only have the ones that have a solid color one color only one color let me have those ones and the spotted and speckled ones let them take a three-day journey so that there can be no way that the spotted and speckled can be it can be in the flock that i'm taking care of Laban thought that that was a deal because he thought there is no way that the spotted and the speckled when they go on a three day journey had that his flock will ever again have the spotted and the speckled. Jacob tells him listen because you've taken the spotted and the speckled away from my flock. If ever again in my flock there is a spotted and a speckled uh, a lamb or a ram or anything that shall be my portion. Laban thinks it's a deal because I'm only giving you a full colored uh, sheep and ram. There is no way the spotted and the speckled can be with you. Now, I wanted to kindly jump over uh, to verse number 37. Verse 37. Now, Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and almonds and chestnuts, peeled the white stripes in them and exposed the white which was on the rods. And the rods which he had peeled, he set before the flocks in the gutter, in the watering trough where the flocks came to drink. So that they could conceive when they were drinking now he does he does something crazy he took some tree he took some rods he takes some rods of green poplar of of poplar almond and chestnut trees he he he, he, he strips them so that they expose the white of the inside and then puts them on the puts them on the watering trough so that when there's when the when the animals are mating they can be looking at them but this is a question how can looking at the at the uh, at the rods make the sheep to be spotted and speckled we'll be talking about that in a little while verse 39 so the flocks conceived before the rods and the flocks brought forth watch this the flock brought brought forth streaked speckled and spotted then jacob separated the lambs and made the lambs face toward the streaks and all the browns in the flock of laban but he put his own flock by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to pass. Whenever the stronger light was conceived that Jacob placed the rods before the eyes of the livestock in the gutter. That they might conceive among the rods. And when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger were Jacob. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks female and male servants and camels and donkeys my monitors okay that's better amen we're gonna be talking about this in a little while are you ready i said are you ready i'm gonna be explaining it in a little while today i want to talk about the blessing factor amen amen but before we do that gathoni is here she's just gonna lead us in this verse for two one minute and then after that we get into the word of god your voice I love your voice you have led me through the fire you have led me through the fire in darkest night, in darkest night. you were closer you like no other I've known you as a father do you 
know him as your friend. Oh, he was a friend. I have believed. I have believed in the goodness, the goodness of the Lord. Lift your voices, everybody, and sing. Hey. Oh my life, oh, my life. Oh, my life. you have been faithful. Oh my life, you have been so so good. Oh my life, you have. Been Sing it one more time, all my life. All my life you have, all my life you have been faithful. Let's hear the congregation, let's hear the congregation. Come on, sing it. Our dear loving Father, today we can make a declaration that you've been a good God. That even in the midst of our deep, deepest, darkest times, your presence, your spirit, your grace has always been available. And Father, today we come with rejoicing, we come with hearts that are filled with gratitude and appreciation. Saying how deeply grateful we are for your mercy that has continued to chase after us. Your goodness that has continued to chase after us. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our God, you are our healer. Our God, you are our deliverer. Our God, you are the restorer of our lives. The Bible says that you satisfy our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like a, an, an eagle. And I pray that in the name that is above every name, this shall be a time of encountering you, O God. You told me that this shall be September to remember. Yes. And already you have to perform miracles. I pray that nobody shall leave this, uh, this house without a miracle. Yes. 
And those who are watching me by television, if there is anyone that is sick on the, in their body, those who are watching me on Facebook, those who are watching me by YouTube, oh God, let the miraculous power of God flow wherever they are. We trust you, oh God, to do the supernatural because that is what you are all about. Yes. Oh God, let your glory be seen today. Let your glory be manifested today and let your power be here today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Oh, come on, say a better amen. amen. You may sit on your enemies forever. Thank you so much. Keep on playing softly in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Gadoni and the worship team. Thank you so much, everybody, for just being such a blessing. I want to take this opportunity and just appreciate all the department workers who work, work so hard, the ushers, uh, the dancers, uh, 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 the, the, the seats of gold, everybody that is just a blessing. The pastors, I love you. I had a wonderful time in Ghana last Sunday but I'm always glad to be back home. Somebody say amen. Amen. Are you okay in this Presbyterian church? Say a better amen. This is a month, September, to remember, and today I want to talk about the blessing factor. I want to talk about the blessing factor for the next couple of weeks as we begin to talk about the will of God for us to walk in the blessing of God. I don't know how many of you read the Friday newspaper, and one of the things, the bold, uh, the bold, uh, 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 headlines on that newspaper was about how the economy has shrunk and people have lost their job. Over 700,000 or close to 800,000 people have lost their jobs. But I have come with good news. <laughs> I've come with good news to tell you that what the newspaper cannot be able to give you, the word of God will give you. I wish I could get an amen from somebody. And therefore today I want to stand as a man of God to say that whatever is happening in the natural there is a spiritual answer. I said, whatever is happening in the natural, there's a spiritual answer. That is why you should not be hopeless. You should not give up. You should not throw in the towel. I know that it may be difficult, but please don't throw in the towel. Uh, there is always hope for you. Now, one of the things you have to understand that when God created man in the Garden of Eden, in the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 26, the Bible says, then God, made, uh, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle and on, of the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. That was the will of God, the mind of God, the agenda of God is actually displayed right there. In the book of Genesis chapter number 1, we see what was the plan of God concerning man. You are not created by accident. You are not actually a, a byproduct of evolution. You are not a monkey at all, a chimpanzee or a zinjathropus at one time, and then you evolved and became a man. No, you are created in the image of God and in the likeness of God, and the purpose for that was to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle. Now, one of the things that you see is that God gives us three dimensions there. He gives us the dimension of the water, he gives us the dimension, the dimension, the dimension of the air, and the dimension of the land, and over every creeper thing that creeps upon the earth. The Bible says, verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. So when God created Adam, in Adam was male and female because the female was pulled out of Adam. In fact, one of the conundrums and one of the puzzles that evolutionists will have is when, uh, 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 is when the Zinjathropas became a man and then the man became a woman. That is a challenge that they always have. And also, it's impossible for a species uh, uh, to turn from one kind of a species to become, to cross over and become another species. So I want to submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that you are created by God in the mind of God and you existed in the mind of God and God had a plan for your life. So lift up your hand and say God had a plan for my life. Amen. And then verse number 28, the Bible says, after God created man, verse 28, the Bible says, so God blessed them. Everybody say God bless them. You will have to talk to me, people of God. Amen. I know it's cold. It's actually not cold anymore. It's hot. So I wanted to talk to me. Clear your throat and talk to me behind the mask. Amen. Somebody say God bless them. Amen. So lift up your hand and say I am blessed. Then God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that moves upon the earth. So the first thing that you see is number one, and I want you to write this down. The first thing that God does is number one, he first of all is clear about his will and his mind and his agenda. Very important thing. God, whatever he does, the first thing that, he, that God does is that it originates in his mind. I want you to, want to write that down. Everything that God does 
does originates in his mind. Everything that God does originates in his mind. It originates in his will, from his will. God will never do something that he hasn't planned to finish. So whatever God does, it originates in his mind. So right there you see that when God created you, in his mind he already knew what kind of a man that he was making. He was creating a man in his image, in his likeness. When you talk about the image of God, you're talking about the picture or, or how man looks, the picture. Image talks about the picture. So when I go, when I, when I call one of my guys who are taking, uh, who are taking pictures, I do have one of my sons who are taking pictures. If they, if they take me a picture, what you will have to see is my image. So right there is the image of the picture that I was taking a couple of days ago. So when I look at that, I look at my own representation. So when God created you, he wanted to on the earth to have his own representation on the earth. You are the representative of God on the earth. But also number two, he made him in his likeness. That is to say, he was able to function like God. He was meant to function like God. And then the second thing that you see is after God created him with an agenda and with a plan, the second thing he does is that God blessed him. God blessed him. God blessed him. And therefore God was very systematic and very deliberate. He blessed him. And then after the third thing he did, he, did, he also gave him a job description. Please write those three things down because they are important. So the first thing that God does is number one, is that he creates him with an agenda. And the agenda is to have dominion. Is to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that creepeth upon the earth. Number one. Number two is that after he creates him in his likeness and in his image, is that he gives him the blessing. He blesses him. And then after that, he gives him a job description. Not a wife, but a job description. And what does he say? He says, be fruitful. Multiply, fill the earth, and do it. That was the job description of Adam. That was the job description of Adam. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Then after you do that, what God said, after you do that, you will have dominion. Please write notes down because you cannot remember everything that I have to say. So today I want to talk to us about the second as aspect and that is the aspect of and God bless them. Because ladies and gentlemen, you are created in the image of God and I'm going to show you in a little while that actually we are restored back to the image of God by reason of Christ dying on the cross of Calvary. And because of that, the blessing of God has been given on us so that we can be fruitful, we can multiply, we can fill the earth and subdue it. That is the will of God and that is the mind of God. There is a blessing that is upon your life. Actually, in the book of Job chapter number one, you see that Satan has a feet. Satan is having a stomachache because why? Because God had blessed, uh, uh, had blessed uh, Job so much that the Bible says in the book of Job chapter one and verse nine, the Bible says, then, uh, then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear you for nothing? Does Job fear you for nothing? And then look at verse number 10. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and, and about all that he hath on every side? And then look at what he says. Has thou blessed him? Thou hast blessed him. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. And one of the things that you see is that Satan was upset because of the blessing of God that was upon, was upon Job. Let me tell you about the blessing that was upon Job. This guy had 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camel, camels. He had, he had 500 yoke of oxen. 500 yoke of oxen, that means that he had, uh, he had 1,000 oxen. Because when you count a yoke, a yoke is made of two oxen. So he had 1,000 oxen and 1,000 donkeys. Now can you imagine the supply, how much he needed to supply for 700 sheep and to supply for 300 camels and to supply for 1,000 oxen and 1,000 donkeys. This guy was truly blessed. And Satan approaches God and said, the reason why he follows you and the reason why he worships you is because you have blessed him on every side. You have made his substance to increase in his hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to announce to somebody here today that by reason of the new covenant that the blessing of God is upon you and I'm going to be talking to you about the blessing factor for the couple of days that are coming and I want you to get ready because September shall be a month to remember. You shall walk into a cash, into a showroom and drive out with a car that money cannot buy, that things that you can imagine that you, you don't even you cannot even qualify for are about to be released in your hands can somebody shout amen now understand this. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich uh, and addeth no sorrow with it. That is Proverbs 20, 20 Proverbs 10 22. Everybody said the blessing 
of the Lord maketh rich. It is not money that maketh rich. Please write that down. It is not money that maketh rich. It is the blessing that maketh rich. It is a blessing that maketh rich. It is not money that maketh rich. It is a blessing that maketh rich. And the blessing of God when it, when it maketh rich, the Bible says, he added no sorrow with it. That is to say, when the blessing of God maketh you rich, it comes sorrow free. It comes tear free. That it comes tears free. That is to say, that the blessing of God cancels out toiling for living. Instead, it positions you in a place of creating wealth. Now, I wanted to write this down and I wanted to write it down in capital letters. God does not give you wealth. I wanted to write that down please and I wanted to underline it because this is important and this is critical for the church of Jesus and the people of God to understand. God doesn't give you wealth. God doesn't give you wealth. What does he give you? Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that gives you power to get wealth so I want everybody to put their hand on your chest and say God gives me power everybody say God gives me power to get wealth everybody say power to get wealth so God doesn't give you wealth if God gives you money that money may be counterfeit God doesn't give you money money is printed by the Kenya by the central bank of Kenya it's not printed in heaven but what God will give you is that to give you power somebody say power Come on, church of Jesus, say power. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, say with a little bit of power, power. Come on, somebody say power. He gives you power. What is power? Power means the ability to act. It means the ability to act. It means the capacity for action. It means the capacity to, for action. It also means the capability to produce an intended effect. God gives you power. Write that down. He gives you power. It also means potency. It means might. It means strength. It means force. It also means influence. Influence. God gives you power. He doesn't give you wealth. He gives you the ability. He gives you the influence. He gives you the potency. He gives you the strength. He gives you the ability to work. He gives you the wisdom. He gives you the gumption. He gives you the mind. He gives you the ability to think. He gives you the knowledge. He gives you the insight. He gives you the creativity to be able to get wealth. Why? And this is important. When God created man in his image after his own likeness. When the Bible says that on the sixth day God stopped creating. He stopped creating and he rested. And the reason why he stopped is not because he was tired it's because he was through he was done and from that point on man was supposed to continue as a co-creator with God he was supposed to be a co-creator with God and now God wanted Adam to use his genius to be able to replicate what he saw in heaven on the earth God doesn't live in caves in the heavens so he did not expect man to live in caves God doesn't walk around heaven with nothing to wear he he, he, he is uh, he's dead with glory. So he expected man to be able to use his genius uh, to be the fast fashion designer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, I said, are you hearing what I'm saying? So God will give you the power, the ability, the grace. Uh, and, and, and allow me to say this. Uh, he will give you the blessing. Everybody said the blessing. He will give you the blessing uh, with the intended consequence uh, of making you productive, uh, be fruitful, and multiply, and and rise in your area of assignment. That is why ladies and gentlemen, I want to announce to you, you are not impotent. You are not powerless. You are powerful. Lift up your hand and shout, I got power. Lift up your hand and shout, I have power. Come on, shout, I have power. Come on, give me some little more help. Yes, thank you. Somebody say, I have power. Come on, say it one more time. I have power. God gives you the power to do what? He gives you the power to get wealth. He gives you the power to, give, to get wealth. You are not impotent. You are powerful. You have the power to manifest God's supernatural grace for, for, for supernatural results. You have the power for that. Now, I want you to kindly just take, allow me to take one moment and look at how we new covenant believers have been ushered into the blessing. In the book of Galatians chapter number 3 and 
and verse 26. The Bible says, for you are all sons of God through the faith in Christ Jesus. The Bible says you are all sons of God. So put your hand on your chest and say, I'm a son of God. What does that mean? It means that you have the DNA of God. You know, the other day, Pastor, you know, my daughter, my, my daughter Stephanie, you know, uh, 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 she, she wrote to us a message and she said, please pray for Ethan. Ethan will run for Monday's food and put it in his mouth and begin to eat. And before Monday realizes, uh, Ethan, who is just a year, is, is he about a year? He's about nine months close to a year. He's not even one year. He begins to eat and finishes Monday. Monday's food before Monday turns, Ethan is done. And I say the DNA of the Cunas is already in the boy. Hallelujah. Amen. I am not this size by faith. I am this size because of the DNA. And therefore, everyone in the Cuna family, we have a DNA of expansion. And it's already showing in Ethan. Guess what? You have the DNA of God. I say you have the DNA of God. It's a DNA of victory. It's a DNA of success is the DNA of power. Can somebody say amen? And the Bible says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, the Bible says again in verse 26, verse, uh, verse 29, look at verse 29. Verse 29 says, uh, and if you are Christ, are you, do you belong to Christ? How many of you here belong to Christ? Wave at me and say, I'm here. If you are Christ, the Bible says, then what? Then are you Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. Now back up a little bit again in Galatians 3. Back up a little bit and go to verse number 13. Please look at verse 13 of Galatians 3. Look at what it says. It says this, that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. Now ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to say something that is important you are not cast you are blessed let me say it one more time and I wish I could get a chat to agree with me. You are not cast, you are blessed. I said you are not cast, you are blessed. The Bible says that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. I don't care where your grandfather went. I don't care what your grandmother did. They may have gone for juju but I want to announce in Zion, you are not cast, you are blessed. They may have spoken things over your life but you are not cast, you are blessed. Why? Because Jesus has redeemed you from the curse of the law. For the Bible says that cast is everyone that hangs on the tree. When Jesus hung on the tree, he broke every cast that was sent in your direction and today I want to decree to those who are watching me by television that if you are in Christ the cast has been broken and you are blessed. Can the child lift up their hand and shout yes! Then verse 14 says uh, that the blessing, that the blessing, that the blessing, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, uh, might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, uh, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, through Christ Jesus uh, and the work that he did at the cross of Calvary, the hanging on the tree. Now you have to understand something that is amazing, that the, the, the punishment of the death by crucifixion was not something that happened in the olden days. In fact, they never used to crucify people but when the Romans uh, when the Roman Empire came uh, because of their disdain for thieves and for the low lives uh, they introduced the uh, crucifixion it was the lowest uh, it was the lowest form of death uh, that was only reserved uh, to the people who are the lowest of the scum on the other uh, so anyone who was crucified uh, number one would not have been a Roman uh, uh, Roman citizen and number two had to be the scum of the other uh, uh, but guess what uh, they were introducing it at the right time because God had already declared in the book of Deuteronomy that cast is a man that hangeth on the tree. It may have taken hundreds and hundreds of years for the crucifixion to be introduced, but it had to be introduced right at the right time so that Jesus can hang on the tree of at the tree at the cross of Calvary. And by reason of hanging on the cross of Calvary, every cast in your life was broken. The cast on the land was broken. Every generation of cast was broken. That is why. I don't spend time talking about the curse because the curse is broken and you are blessed. Lift up your hand and shout, I am blessed. Amen. 
What does it mean to be blessed? Write this down. The blessing means it is the divine empowerment for supernatural accomplishment in a natural setting. The blessing is divine empowerment. It's divine empowerment for supernatural accomplishment in a natural setting. The blessing, write this down, is divine power for productivity and profitability. Oh my goodness, I, mean, I like that one. The blessing is divine power for productivity and profitability. The blessing is divine ability imparted on humanity to produce divine results through human effort. Please write that down. It is divine ability imparted on humanity. I like that. Ability imparted on humanity to produce divine results through human effort. Number uh, The next point is that the blessing is the spiritual factor it is the spiritual factor placed on humanity to produce supernatural results in a natural setting my goodness me it is a spiritual factor it is a spiritual mm, the spiritual oomph the spiritual thing you cannot explain that is placed on humanity to produce supernatural results in the natural setting is a supernatural quality it is just that thing that uh, brother Eric walks into a showroom and the guy says where do you work and he says I work in Cunas church he may not even have liked the Cunas probably that name gave him headache and stomachache but by reason of the blessing of God he had to release what belongs to Eric because ladies and gentlemen when the favor of God is upon you and the blessing of God is upon you it is not about people liking you it is about God liking you and causing men to empower you by reason of the favor of God. Can somebody say amen? So the Bible says this uh, in the book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, Proverbs 10 22, the Bible says uh, that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and not no sorrow with it. Uh, that word sorrow is from the Hebrew word eseb -e e-t-s-e-b eseb, -e which means painful toil, pangs of pain on the body and mind. It means painful toil. Painful toil on the mind. It also means grievous labor. Grievous labor. The blessing of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, will eliminate painful toil. It will eliminate every kind of sorrow and it positions you into a place of sweatless triumph. Sweatless triumph. So listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. The blessing of God does not come with an iota. Yes. It doesn't come with an iota of sorrow. It eliminates sorrow, it eliminates toil and positions you in a place of sweatless triumph. Church of Jesus, I know the statistics are dire. I know the pandemic has ravaged and I know things are difficult. But I want to announce to you that before the pandemic hit, before the economy shrunk, before people got fired, God had already blessed you and God had already positioned you to supernaturally be become productive and fruitful in this economy and may I submit to you oh I sense the glory of God may I submit to you that you are about to experience the supernatural provision of God and the supernatural blessing of God not because of the times we are in because God is not does not move and God is not moved by the times he will still make a way where there seems to be no way can somebody say amen God knew about the pandemic God knew about the economy God knew about everything that was going on and I want to announce to you that by reason of the blood of Jesus uh, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Exodus uh, put the blood on your doorpost uh, and on the lintels uh, put the blood and the, 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 the Bible says that God says uh, when the angel of death uh, sees the blood uh, he shall pass over you uh, and today I want to decree and to declare by reason of the blood of Jesus uh, I say by reason of the blood of Jesus uh, the pandemic shall pass over you poverty shall pass Pass over you, brokenness shall pass over you, lack shall pass over you, and yes, death shall pass over you. You shall not die before your time. I decree and declare that God shall give you long life and He shall satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Can I get somebody to shout yes? Lift up your hand and shout the blood. Say the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood shall protect me. The blood shall protect me from COVID. The 
blood shall protect me from cancer. The blood shall protect me from diabetes. The blood of Jesus, by reason of the blood of Jesus, that, that blood has ushered me into a new covenant that is based on you. Oh, come on, somebody. That is based on better promises. Can somebody shout, I'm blessed? So I lift up your hand and shout, I'm blessed. God never intended for you to walk with toil, but God released a blessing so that you can walk without toil. You can labor without strain. You can be diligent without sorrow, and you can prosper without pain. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Jesus paid the price for your provision. And guess what? Today we are not even talking provision. We are talking productivity. Because provision is the entrance point. But that is not the will of God. That is not the entire will of God. The will of God is to bless you until you become a blessing. I wish I could get 30 people to say yeah. I said I wish some people, I could get some people to say yeah. So he tells Adam, he says, Adam, I want you to be fruitful, to multiply. I want you to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue the earth. Quickly, let me give you some, in two minutes, the definitions of this word, because I have so much to go. I don't even know how far I'll go, but I'll pick up from here. To, re, to, to be fruitful means, uh, fru, fruitful and multiply means to increase and have an abundance in every way. To increase and have an abundance in every way. It means to increase and to have an abundance in every way. To replenish means to fill up, to perpetually renew, to supply and to keep full. That was the will of God. Replenishment uh, is a function of good stewardship that ensures that it, we replace everything that we have used up. So that we have used up, for example, trees to make timber so that we can make tables. But we don't, uh, uh, we don't leave the next generation without trees. So we have to replenish the forest uh, so that the next generation of Mandy and, and Ethan can be able to step in and have trees. That is what is called replenish. To subdue means to conquer. It means to conquer. It also means to keep something under. This was the will of God. So when God put man in charge of the other, he, didn't put, he put him to have dominion. God never intended for man to be ruled over. He had, a, the, uh, he had every intention for man to be in charge. Can somebody say amen? And therefore he gives him the blessing which is the divine empowerment uh, for him to be productive. Now, please, I wanted to write this down. My goodness me, I wish I had two hours to preach this. I wanted to write this down. Is that the spiritual always precedes the natural. The spiritual always precedes the natural. What am I saying? The first thing that God does, does is that he decides the man that he wants and then he forms the man and then he blesses him. After he blesses him, he then gives him the job description. The blessing is the spiritual that always precedes the natural. I wanted to write that down. If you want to experience success in your life, you must understand that the spiritual will always precede the natural. Please write that down because that is important. Let me qualify it and let me prove it to you in the book of Matthew chapter 28 when Jesus is going away Matthew 28 for those of you who have been doing with us the Bible challenge you remember this verse Jesus tells them and tells them all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth and he says go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you and lo I am with you always what was that it was the commandment for the job description for the apostles but after he gives them the, uh, the after he gives them the command what does he tell them in the book of Acts? He tells them, don't go and begin to preach. I want you to go to the upper room and wait uh, until I endow you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, why? Because the spiritual must always precede the natural. God did not want them to go preaching until he had put on them the spiritual quality for them to be successful. Let me prove it to you again. In the book of Psalm 67, verse number 5 and verse number 7. Listen to what the Bible says. Psalm 67, verse number, seven, number 5. Uh, what does the Bible says he says let the people praise you oh lord let the people praise you what is that it is the spiritual activity of praise please understand that when you're praising god in the church we are not engaging in futility when you're praising god you're activating the supernatural you are in the realm of the spirit your praise is in the spirit your worship in this is in the spirit that is why jesus told the samaritan woman that a time is coming and a time is now when the two worshipers shall worship me not on the mountain 
mountain, not in Jerusalem, but shall worship me in the spirit and in truth. So when you begin to praise and to worship, you are engaging in the spiritual. And then the Bible says, then, verse 6, the earth shall yield and her increase, and God, our God, shall bless us, and God shall bless us, and all the, all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So this is what David is saying. When you engage in the spiritual activity, what you're actually doing is that you're unleashing the grace for you to go into the natural realm and become productive in the natural realm. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you shouldn't give your tithe last. You should give your tithe fast. Why? Because tithing is not a physical activity. Tithing is a spiritual activity. And the Bible says, bring you the tithe into my storehouse and see if, it, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. When you bring the tithe, which is spiritual, you allow God to pour out the blessing spiritual. And when you go into the marketplace natural, you become productive in the marketplace because you have already engaged the spiritual, which must always precede the natural. I, I, don't, I hope I'm making myself clear. I said, I hope I'm making myself clear. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you must always engage in the spiritual. Don't just sit there at home watching people on television and watching people on, on, on Facebook Live. The days of watching and being online, those days are over. You need to come to the house of God. You need to come with the house of God with a praise and a shout, with an offering and a dance. Because as you engage in the spiritual, do you know what is happening? right now there's a release of the blessing of God that is happening right now as I preach and when you go into the marketplace Eric you shall find a guy who only knows the Cuna church and he shall begin to favor you because your spiritual will begin to unleash the blessing of God in the natural your prayer is not in vain I said your prayer is not in vain. Your love for God is not in vain. Your shout is not in vain. The Bible says let the people praise you, oh God. When they praise you, then the earth shall yield an increase. I wish I could get 30 people to jump up on their feet and give God a crazy praise and watch the earth bring forth her increase. Give God a praise. Sit down. I wish I had another hour. Everybody say the spiritual. Come on, say it like you mean it. The spiritual will always precede the natural. Your service is spiritual in the house of God. Ushers, listen to me. Your ushering is not just as walk, it's just, just you walking around and I seeing your beautiful faces and all of you guys look so amazing. But it's a spiritual activity. So that when you go into the marketplace, God begins to bless you. Why? Because God is not unjust to forget your labor of love. He is a reward of those who are spiritually engaged in doing his work. If you're in the media team, if you're in the department and you come and serve and sometimes uh, nobody notices your service Maureen I want you to understand uh, there is a God in heaven uh, who will release a quality on your life uh, that will make you prosper in places where you never imagined uh, don't stop praying uh, don't stop praising uh, don't stop reading the word uh, don't stop worshipping uh, don't stop doing spiritual activity I know sometimes it doesn't look as if uh, there is going to be payback uh, but I want to announce in Zion uh, that your prayer Prayer is not in vain. God is about to move and do something supernatural. And I am agreeing with you that this shall be September to remember. I said this shall be September to remember. Can I get 30 people who believe that God is about to give them a miracle before this month is over to jump up on their feet and give God a crazy praise for 30 seconds. This shall be September. September to remember. Sit down. But the spiritual cannot produce what the natural produces. And this is a frustration of many people. Is that they pray in tongues but they are lazy. They can pray until heaven moves. But the guys have refused to use their head. That is why you need to get the book, think on these things. Because the reason why God makes, gives you the blessing 
is so that you can go into the marketplace and become productive. Your spirituality is useless if it is not producing for you. Oh my God, am I still in the house of God? Because the thing is this, we are prayerful but broke. Speaking in tongues can't pay rent. Shall we talk? The will of God is for you to have all round success. Are you hearing me? So when God created the earth, after six days, he stopped, not because he was tired, but because he wanted Adam to take over. But guess what? <laughs> God deposited iron ore. He deposited iron ore on the earth, but did not give Adam a car. Because it was not the responsibility of God for Adam to drive. Or for Adam to fly. That was entirely on Adam. So I will give you the raw material and bless you. But whatever you do with raw material, it's up to you. So I will give you trees. But if you want to live in a cave, help yourself. But the tree can make a house. And a boat. And a table. And a chair. But if all you want to do is climb the tree and eat fruits, help yourself. But you can take the tree and make a table. <laughs> God placed rocks everywhere. He placed rocks everywhere. So that if Adam wants to build a house with stones, the materials are available. But if he wants to live in a mud house, help yourself. So Adam, the level in which you live is not dependent on me. It is dependent on you. I have given you the genius because I created you in my likeness and in my image. But if you want to be Mumu, shall we talk? If you want to be Mumu and live in a madhouse, by the way, my father grew up in a madhouse and I remember us going to uh, to the madhouse when I was young. And uh, it was actually going like this because those guys, when they used to build madhouses, they didn't build madhouses to stay. Actually, the reason why they were madhouses is so that they, when they fall, they just do another one. And what used to happen is that the whole village would gather for the day called Idiga. Idiga was the day when everybody came and they would come with tea and everything to build a house, a madhouse. And they would start in the morning and in the evening, the madhouse is standing. But guess what? When they were doing the madhouses, the stones were available. The timber was available in the tree. But the, 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 the dimension in which they lived was dependent on their creativity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, I know you're telling me that they were not educated. Stone houses did not come out the last 50 years. If you go back all the way to Egypt, thousands of years ago, go back to China, you will still find stone houses. It was a choice to be Mumu. Now, I know I'm, I'm, being, I'm not being nice to our ancestors. But I'm telling you, you have to come to the point of understanding that some of us, the reason why we are so temporal in the way we do things is because we are still walking in the same mindset. Listen to me. A car is not an asset. A car is a means of transportation. And the moment Pastor Eric got that car out of the showroom, even if he got it at a discounted price, the moment he drove it, the price went down. The value went down. That tells you it's not an asset. It is just a means of transportation. That is why you shouldn't be impressed by somebody who's driving three cars. An asset is a kavuroti. Now, now, I know I come from Central. And some of us, you know, but let me tell you something. My definition of an asset is something that appreciates in value even when you are not working it. So when I build a house for 10 million, when I come back, it's 12. 
The following week is 15. What is that? It's an asset. Mindset. So everything you need. <laughs> oh, come on, talk to me now. Everything you need. Listen, before you wear a suit of 50,000, do you have even a plot? <laughs> because what the blessing does is that the blessing breaks every mumuness and allows you to think like a child of the most high God. Are you still listening to what I'm saying? Now, I only have five minutes to go. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, when you are blessed, you cannot be lazy. When you are blessed, you cannot be lazy. Allow me to give you quick scriptures here so that you can be able to finish. Listen to what the Bible says. Now, let me give you some quick scriptures here. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the blessing will motivate you to work in the natural physical realm so that you can be productive. Now, listen to the scriptures. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4 Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4 He that has a slack hand becomes poor But the hand of the diligent Maketh rich The hand of the diligent Maketh rich How can you snore for 8 hours Sleep for 8 hours Do you know if you sleep for 8 hours And you live to be 75 You would have slept for 25 years of your life Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 Write it down The Lord will open his good treasure The heavens to give you rain In your land in his season To bless all the work of your hands Everybody lift up your right hand And say the Lord shall bless the work of my hands I cannot hear you Please talk like you you're Some people with some, some good stuff Lift up your hand and shout The Lord shall bless The work of my hands Lift up your hand and say, the Lord shall bless the work of my hands. Proverbs 12 and verse 11. Proverbs 12 and verse 11. He that tills his land shall do, shall do what? Can you read that scripture with me? What will it be? Uh -huh. Frivolity is devoid of another. Can you give me that scripture in the Amplified? Give me that scripture in the Amplified. <laughs> That scripture in the Amplified, Proverbs 12, 11. He who tills his land shall be satisfied with bread. But he who follows worthless pursuit is lacking in sense. Taking pictures and posting them. Taking pictures of your food and posting them. Those are worthless pursuit. Unless that is your area of calling. I say, unless that's your area of calling. So you are, you, are, you are advertising something. But so that people can see that you had a hamburger. And it's without understanding. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 27. Proverbs 12 verse 27. Listen to what the Bible says. Proverbs 12 verse 27 in the, in the Amplified. It says, the, the lazy man, the slothful man, does not catch his game or roast it. Once he kills it. But the diligent man gets precious possession. Wait. This has been Africa's problem. African problem. We grow coffee. And instead of roasting the coffee. We export it to Europe. Where they. I don't know what they even do with it. Ship it back. And sell it to us again at 50 times the price of the coffee when we sold it. So we are working on catching the game, but we don't roast the game. Because the issue is not in the catching of the game, but in the roasting of the game. We grow cocoa in Africa, then export it to Switzerland. And then they said Swiss made chocolate. Switzerland doesn't have one tree of cocoa. But if you go to the airport, you shall buy Swiss made, Swiss made chocolate. Where did they get the cocoa? Charlie. But guess what? Ghana has awakened up. And they have said they will not be exporting their cocoa. They will be making chocolate. The day
days of begging and borrowing are coming to an end and there's a new generation of blessed people who are rising up today stand up on your feet and give God a crazy praise as we come to the end Those of you watching me by television, you can continue to watch me on YouTube and Facebook as you come to the end of this service. Also, please call for the book, for the book, and God is going to bless you. As everybody else sits down, let me pray for those who are watching me by television. Father, heal, deliver, set free, break every chain that has held people captive, and save them in Jesus' name. If you'd like to get saved, please call the number on the screen. Somebody is waiting to minister to you. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Africa is not cursed. <laughs> I tell you, Africa is not cursed. In fact, when I went to Ghana, Peter will tell you, Peter, Ghana, do you know Ghana has more churches than nightclubs? It's not like Kenya. Nigeria. <laughs> so spiritually, we are where we ought to be. What is the problem? We have not translated our spirituality into. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I can promise you, no matter how spiritual you are, when your landlord comes and knocks the door at the end of the month, you don't look at the landlord and say, Rebroko Shepra. Ika dodo pakalia dusha pakata. Iko sapai lagai ragai. No. You don't tell your landlord, Sukami to be si fuso binti bi kanta birakaria. That is not what you tell your landlord. What do you tell your landlord? You have to give your landlord a paycheck, a check. And I want to announce that in the name of Jesus, there is going to be a release of the blessing of God upon the house of God. You shall be a landlord. I said you shall be a landlord. I said you shall drive the best, wear the best, own the best, live in the best in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I somebody say amen? Can I get people getting excited because multi-millionaires and multi billionaires who are full of the Holy Ghost are being released in the house of God give God a 30 second praise as I preach to you today let me give you some more scriptures and then we close I'll pick up from here hallelujah lift up your head and say I'm blessed Then lift up your left hand and say, I'm also hardworking. <laughs> All right, let's do this again. Right hand, I'm blessed. Left hand, I like it. Let's do it one more time. Right hand, left hand. That's why God gave you two hands, two legs. Hallelujah. Blessed. Wow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now listen, the nations we admire is not that Switzerland is or Australia or Canada has human beings with three legs and two heads. It is because there are people who have decided to practically take what God has put there and use it. Now, they have, some of them like France and those guys have prospered on the exploitation of Africans. That is a given. But for how long are we going to continue complaining? Eh. Exploitation, exploitation, exploitation. Isn't it time for us to stand up and say, we are going to do something with what God has given us? Can somebody say amen? Now lift up your hand and say, I am blessed. I'm also hardworking. And let me just say, and please, this is not a political uh, statement. Okay? This is not a political statement. This is just a spiritual statement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a spiritual statement. Lift up your hand and say, I'm not a hustler. Come on, lift up your hand one more time and say, I'm not a hustler. I'm not a hustler. I am not a hustler. I am blessed. I am a multi-millionaire. I am a billionaire. I am a thinker. I work hard. 
I don't need to hustle when God has blessed me with every heavenly blessing in heavenly places. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop allowing yourself to be defined by political narrative. You are not a hustler. You are a child of the Most High God and God has blessed you with every heavenly blessing in heavenly places. Put your hands together and give God a praise in the house of God. confined. Have you checked the definition of a hustler? Please go and check. Yeah, it's one who's struggling. You know, I am blessed. Hallelujah. No, the DP is my friend, but I'll still tell him, I am not those guys you're talking about. Me, I am blessed. Can somebody who is blessed lift up their hand and say, I am blessed? Shout one more time, I'm blessed. Blessed people are not hustling. Blessed, blessed people are making it. I said blessed people are making it. You are making waves. I say you are making waves. I wish I could get somebody to say yeah. When they Google your name, they see the blessing of God on your life. I decree and declare that God shall not only bless you, he shall make you a blessing. When people want to see blessed people, they shall look at you. Oh, come on, talk to me and say, yeah. You may be struggling right now, but that is not a sentence. That is just a foundation of what God is about to do in your life. And today I stand as a man of God to announce September to remember the blessing of God is coming upon you. You shall rise up with power. You shall rise up and become all that God called you to become. Go give three people a high five and tell them, I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Go to three people, give them a high five and tell them, I'm blessed. I am blessed. Walk over to somebody, give them a high five and tell them, I am blessed, baby. Airport. Amen. Sit down. And brother, it's called Kutoka. Amen. So we're telling them Kutoka means leave. It's called leave airport. Proverbs chapter 6. Hey. Wagoi. Wagoi. We Go to the aunt you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Verse 7. Which having no captain, no overseer, no ruler. If you still need people to supervise you. So that you can be able to do what needs to be done. You are a novice and juvenile and you are not going anywhere. Blessed people don't need a captain, don't need an overseer. I don't need a phone. I don't need anybody to call me to tell me to wake up and pray. This morning at 2 a.m. I was in the prayer closet praying for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This anointing is not flowing by magic. It's flowing by his pursuit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is because I have pursued God the entire week. And you sit there, you want me to give you money. If you want me to give you money, you come and pray with me the way I pray. If you want my money, you have to work like me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, provides our supplies in summer. What does, she, what does the ant do? It looks at summer and says, this is the time for harvest. So the ant will harvest in her summer to keep for winter. You have to have the wisdom to know that not every time will be summer. There are times when you will have more than enough. You don't finish it. When you have more than supply, you don't buy a new shoe. I was just drawing your attention to my shoe. I'm sure you eh? Amen. I can buy a shoe. You know why? Because I have done what I need to do and everything else in my life is working so I can buy a shoe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you don't, you don't start to raise your standard of living because money has come. And this is why many people remain poor. It's because when you get a pay rise, instead of investing... Instead of investing, and by the way, let me say this. You should get to a point where you live by your passive income, not by what you work for. 
passive income. What is passive income? When a kaburoti had a holiday here, money is just coming without you sweating. That is what you should live for. What you work for should be for your investment. I translate. It means that you have something you have a, you have something that you're doing on the side, whether it shares that gives you dividends. That is what you live by. That's what you should target for. That's what you should target for. So that whatever you're working for is for investment. And your passive income is for living. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I know some of you are looking at me and saying, Bishop, you don't know where I am. Yes, I'm talking about where you are because of where you're going. Because where you are is not a sentence. You're not going to be there forever. That's why I'm speaking about the blessing of God because the blessing of God is about to lift you and put you up there. But when you get up there, don't just think about, you know, <laughs> thank God for your car. It's a, it's a what brand? It's a what brand? It's a Nissan. All right? Son, stay with the Nissan. I know from where you come from, you'd like a Mercedes. <laughs> you know, when you come from Europe, uh, you want a Mercedes. But, but, but let me just help you. Right now, that may not be the, the thing that you need the, the, the most. And this is what you understand when you look at people, especially who are in places like Europe. Those guys don't even have cars. They use trains. They have a, they have a, they have a, um, a, an effective, effective transportation system that doesn't require them to drive. Now, in Africa, we still have to get there. But I'm saying this, we have to change the way we think and understand that we have to provide our supply for summer and gather your food in harvest. So, when you begin to have a harvest, it's not time for you to spend everything. You have to be able to know how to be able to separate what it is for eating and what you need for investment so that by the time you are, you are in your 60s, you don't have to work. You work because you want now, I don't believe in re retiring. I believe in referring. But I don't intend to be in my 70s that I have to preach for me to, to be able to take care of Pastor Kathy. I'll be preaching because I want to, not because I have to. Are you listening to me? And that is where God wants to take you. So begin to provide yourself because of the days that you're coming. Now listen, I do not intend to be a burden to my children. The Bible says that a good man does what? He leaves an inheritance for my children must kiss my photograph when I leave the wealth. When I show them the wealth and tell them, children, this is what I have left for you. Nathan will give me a hug. Mandy will spin on her head. And Nia will run a marathon when they see what it is that I have done for them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is what the blessing does. The blessing is a spiritual force that translates in natural thinking. Are you hearing me? I said, are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is what you need to prepare yourself and to plan for in the name of Jesus. And I'm talking to you right now in your 20s because your 50s are coming. It was just yesterday I was 25. Just yesterday I met Pastor Kathy. Just the other day. Just, it was just like a flash. And she passed by the booth and there she was. I saw her. Just the other day. Now we are grandparents. And no matter how you paint it, we are guka and shosho. Even if you turn it, the other day I said, baby, no matter how you turn it, we show show. But the good thing is, <laughs> the good thing is this, is that she is aging gracefully and she's not a disgrace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So listen to me. As every day when you wake up, you must be able, number one, every time you wake up, and this is important. I, don't, I, I think I'll go to Laban next week. But I want you to understand that every time you wake up, the first thing you must do, the first thing you must do is that you must invoke the spiritual. You must operate the spiritual. Why? Because the spiritual always precedes the natural. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then after that, you go into the marketplace and begin to tap into the spiritual to produce for you the natural. Now let me show you something. We have 24 hours a day. How many hours? All of us, how many hours? All of us, amen? If you take 24 hours and sleep for 8, which you shouldn't, but let's just say for the sake of argument, you sleep for 8 because they tell us it's okay to rest and to rejuvenate. Okay, fine. That leaves how many more hours? 16. If you work for 8 hours, that makes it how many hours? 16. You still have how many hours? 
eight hours. If you take the eight hours and take a tithe, the tithe of 24 hours is two hours, 30 minutes is the tithe. If you engage in the spiritual things for two hours, 30 minutes every day, your life will take a trajectory you never imagined. It will take a trajectory you never imagined. Now, the generation we have today is a generation that is sacrificing the spiritual for the natural. Thank you, honey. Show, show. <laughs> but baby, you're the most beautiful show on the... Isn't she? Ebu, stand up, baby. I know you're going to sell my book, but I want them to see what, how you look. My goodness me. You know, sometimes I look at her like this and say, Ui, what niwangu. Can you please put your hands together for your mother? Come on, put your hands together for your mom. Hallelujah. Amen. So even in the marriage, even in my marriage, we have to engage the spiritual. We pray together. We, we have communion together. We, uh, uh, we spend time together. Why? Uh, in, the, in the things of prayer and so forth. I can tell you this. Many times, many marriages that fail. If your marriage is failing, look at whether you pray together. That's the first thing you should look at. If you are praying together, most of the time, as you pray together, solutions will be, will be sorted out as you pray together. In fact, let me give you a very good solution. Before you argue, alright, before you argue, join hands and pray. <laughs> Tell your wife, honey, we are about to argue, but before we do, let's join hands and pray for 30 minutes. <laughs> Thirty minutes. Then after thirty minutes, say, "Okay, let's argue." Ulikuwa na sema nini? What happens after thirty minutes? You'll be crying. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. Why? Because the spiritual, when it precedes the natural, things begin to happen. Unfortunately, we are spending so much time in the natural and not in the spiritual, so that we are not able to tap into the realm of the spirit. And guess what? This is another thing I've seen. When people get blessed by God, they used to be in the house of God. They used to be doing all manner of spiritual things in the house of God. Suddenly now, because they are driving, Eric, they have to go on Sunday morning to wash their car in the car hire, in the car wash, because now they have a car. And guess what? They start to compromise on the spiritual, and before you know it, they are carnal. Because it is only by engaging the spiritual that ensures that what you're doing is not carnal. The natural is not carnal. There's a difference between natural and carnal. Carnal is when it's, it's, it's being done in the flesh. Natural is when you're doing what you're supposed to do by using the work of your hands. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So you are a carpenter. You are a teacher. You are a lawyer. You are a mason. You, 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 David, you do make uh, those things that you make. Amen. Whatever it is that you make, Cairo, you sell electronic equipment. Uh, uh, what, that is what you're doing in the natural. But you shouldn't be doing those things carnally. Carnality is when you're taking bribes. Is when you're compromising. Is when you're tearing down your neighbor. By the way, let me just say this, Carol. Even if you are in a line where there are 50 other people selling their electronic equipment, when the blessing of God is upon you, people will leave all those other shops and come to your shop. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Isn't it amazing? I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you go to a Mwindi shop in the morning, before they open the shop, what do they do? They sacrifice to their idols and pour incense on their idols before they open the shop. Why? Because they understand that spiritual always precedes the natural. But look at us, people of God. We can't even be in morning glory. You wake up like a Taliban. Who? I'm running late. I'm running late. I'm running late like a Taliban. And you're out there eh, trying to make ends meet. That's what the devil whoops you all the time. You should be deliberate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You should be deliberate. Be deliberate at the time you sleep. Be very deliberate at the time you sleep. Sleep at a deliberate time. Don't just stay there on Instagram until 2 a.m. You go to work, your eyes are red. You haven't even prayed. Your eyes are red. What were you doing? Instagram the whole night. No. You would deliberately go to bed at 10 o'clock. Come on now. 
you wake up at 5 o'clock, pray for an hour, join the morning glory, receive the feeding of the word of God from the man of God, get into your car, Hello? How many people are believing God September to remember shall give them a car? I say it shall give you a car. Get into your car. Don't go listening to all nonsense. Talking about all manner of rubbish. That is not your portion. Put on some wonderful worship of Pastor Kathy, go worshiping God all the way to the office. By the time you get to the office, the anointing is dripping. When anyone with a demon walks through that door, the, the demon is rebuked because you have already engaged in the spiritual that precedes the natural and the blessing of God is working upon your life. Now give God a 30 second praise. I'm done. I shall pick up from here next Sunday. Praise the Lord everybody!